to hold tighter and tighter tolerances when cylindrical grinding a 50 millimeter 2 inch diameter part. Sometimes as tight as plus or minus 5 microns which is plus or minus 2 tenths. We have in process gauging and we hit the exact dimension during grinding. We then remove the part and measure it with an air micrometer and we're still in spec. But then when the customer gets the part they complain that we're out of spec and usually undersized. Some people say we need a chiller in our coolant supply but our stock removal rates are really, really low. Our coolant delivery is good. We know we're getting a bunch, uh, enough coolant to the part. And I know the heat input to the part is minimal. So why do I need to chill my coolant? What's going on? Let's say we're grinding a two inch, 50 millimeter diameter part. Bigger than this guy, but here we got a shaft. Now we grind this guy and he gets hot and hot things like to expand. But then they contract and we're okay again. But now we've got a different issue going on. Because if we're really going to hold tight tolerances, well, it kind of depends on what's the temperature of our part going in, what's the temperature of the part when we measure it, what's the temperature of the part three weeks from now when it gets to the customer. So let's say we got a part and he's sitting on the rack and that rack outside the machine is 25 degrees C. Stick them in the grinding machine. We grind this guy. Now we keep things cool. We're not doing too bad with heat. We're not adding much heat to the part. But our coolant's at 30 degrees C because he's been running for a couple hours and he got a little hot. Maybe he started off at 25 degrees C, but now he's at 30 degrees C. Now my coolant's hot. I got all this coolant splashing around. My bulk temperature of my workpiece is now 30 degrees C. Not necessarily because of the grinding, but because my coolant's at 30 degrees C. Now I grind this guy to final size, my in-process gauging says, boom, we've hit the mark, everything's good, we pull out, and we're probably exactly, or pretty close to the dimension we want, and we're in spec. But my coolant's at 30 degrees C. He was at 25 this morning, but now he's at 30. Not a huge thing, but still there's something. Take him out, take him over to our air micrometer, measure the diameter, hey, we're still in spec because my part's still at 30 degrees C. Put them on the rack, leave them on the rack for an hour, take them off the rack, measure them again. Now the guy's cooled back to air temperature, 25 degrees C. And all of a sudden that my part that was in spec is now too small because he's shrunk. You can do some rough calculations for this. So you can say, well, 50 millimeter original diameter part, Temperature goes from 25 degrees C to 30 degrees C. That's five degrees difference. We can look up the thermal expansion coefficient of whatever material we're grinding. In this case, I got one 13 times 10 to the minus six millimeters per millimeter per degree C. Multiply that by the temperature, and that tells me my part is gonna grow three microns. Three microns due to that five degrees C. If it's 10 degrees C, it'll be about double. Now it'll be a little different because it's, the equation's a little bit changed depending on the circle, but just take a rough ballpark, figure what that biggest dimension is. And all of a sudden my part now is 50.003 millimeters. Ooh, I'm getting close to being out of spec. So in some respects, the chiller on the coolant has nothing to do with the grinding operation. It just has to do with what temperature is the temperature of that part when we grind, what's the temperature of that part when we pull them out. So that's one of the main reasons, if you're trying to hold tight tolerances, why you might need to stick a chiller on that machine and make sure you know what that temperature is of that chiller, what temperature you're going to be measuring the part at.